Uh, we're gonna start. We're gonna start off with the topic that you probably saw in the title today. Um, Frank Ocean and Coachella 2023. Give me your opinion on why. Give, let's, let's hear something from Dr. K. Let's hear, let's get an exclusive. So, I know a lot of people are really disappointed, and rightfully so, because of just how much the tickets costed. But because I'm a Frank Ocean fan, I'm like giving giving it some. Give I'm not going. I'm excuse. not going as hard, but like I also am not the one who was at Coachella. Okay. I didn't pay that money, so I can't really. It's easy for me to give my feedback because I didn't waste my money or anything like that, so I can be more lenient towards them and stuff like that. But, but at the end of the day, a lot of people were mad at him because they were mad at him for a lot of reasons. First one was that he performed nights and he wasn't singing a song. Did he perform any songs at all? Yeah, he did. He did. Like with a mic? Mm-hmm. But how, like, it's crazy because a lot of people's artists, a lot of people's favorite artists go on there and just because he didn't lip sync the song mm -hmm. and they knew he wasn't, like, singing it, people were mad. But a lot of people go on there and lip sync the songs and because they're giving you a performance, people aren't as mad. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So I feel like that's where they was picking and choosing there. But also because of the half of the show didn't go as planned. But he broke his he sprained his leg. He broke his leg. <laughs> his ankle. He sprained his leg. He did not break shit. So He sprained his ankle, didn't he say? It's something about his leg though. He's it was a, I think it was an ankle injury. But go ahead, finish. And he ended up cutting it short. But they said it was curfew. So he was just going with the going with the um with the rules. But also, this is this is Frank Ocean's first live performance in a long time. And also, it's his last performance since the reason why he stopped doing his live performances and stuff was his brother died. And so, mm -hmm. a lot of people will say that that's not an excuse because, you know, he's had all this time. He should have been more prepared. But I also think of it as he probably still didn't want to go live. He probably still didn't want to have this live performance. You really think that? Mm-hmm. Why do you say that? Why didn't he want to have this live performance? Because he's been, he been not had this live performance. Yeah, but do you think this nigga's, like, busy or something? I'm not saying that he's busy. What you like? What you think he doing? I'm saying that he probably didn't want to have it because when you out of the loop, so like when you haven't done it in a long time, and the reasoning why you haven't done it in a while mm -hmm. is because of like a death and stuff like that, then and it, that death was like so traumatic for you that you can't perform live. I will understand why you don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to pull up a clip. Go ahead, finish. So. I don't know. I think he gave, I think he, he did the best that he could do a lot. I mean, like the reason why I don't, I don't really take it as hard as all the other people is because a lot of people judge people's performances all the time mm -hmm. and don't really consider the, the performer. Like what they got going on type shit. Yeah. Like, I guess he did perform right here. Let me put it on the screen so they can see. But he did. Um, if you actually like saw the the some of the performances that he did do, they were good. And if you really a Frank Ocean fan, they said he had like a whole set. He did. Ice ice skater rinks. So he didn't get a chance to do the ice skating rinks because he sprained his leg. That okay. was the second half. So he's gonna be on skates. Yeah, all the dancers in the second half of that of the second half of his performance after he had the security officer on there, he. All those dancers were ice skaters. Oh, shit. They were supposed to be ice skating, but he couldn't do it because he sprained his leg. Bro, just look at this. Bro. Hold on. Sorry. And also, how do you feel about... Oh, you can play the clip. 
Cause I'm just trying to like, I'm just trying to like, this is crazy. Look at all these guys. Oh, watching the bass drummer with my brother and and Travis. I don't know if Travis Taco is here, but we were just dancing in that tent. Is he still gay? Frank Ocean? I think he's bi. He's bi. Mm. I know he, he like the way he be rapping. Like he couldn't have been just gay. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean. Uh, to their music and um, I know he would have been so excited to be here with all of us and see and, I didn't um, think he was on a mic at all I yeah, want to say was. thank you for um, he sung God's the beat. support and the ears and the love so. Thomas perfect I tell you I tell you how much I value you this it? Yeah. We don't gotta no. Damn, look at how many people that bruh. How is this comfortable as a viewer? Can you see yourself being one in this crowd? Yeah. Like on the hands on the ground. What you mean? Like feet on the ground. Like cause you know, cause these are the cheapest tickets that was two bands. Mm-hmm. So everybody in the two, four, six. That's but the right. people that were invited to coach, those are the people that actually bought their tickets and stuff like that. But the people, influencers and stuff like that, they had their own little separate section right in the front. Oh, yeah. Okay. That wasn't as crowded. Okay. So it just depends on how much money you plan on spending. It's just like going to any concert. Like, are you going to pay for general admission or are you going to pay the extra money? Mm -hmm. You got it like that to get to the sec the section where you don't have to be like, this to somebody bro that's crazy i don't know i don't know me personally i don't know i can't see i really can't i don't know I, maybe it's just that's too packed bro that's too packed it, that's too packed but if you think about it he like it's a once in a for to watch him it's a once in a lifetime opportunity because he doesn't go he doesn't do it mm. so it's like if you are a diehard Frank Ocean fan, and this is the only performance that he's had in so many years, and probably the last. You really think it's gonna be his last, bro? You think that nigga gonna be like Andre 3000? Okay, stop, that's like probably him? gonna be his last performance, and if it's not, then he's probably not gonna have one for a long time again. Yeah, you're right. Yes, because Frank Ocean is the one that really proved to like, because it'd be like a lot of people will say, yeah, this is our last time going on tour, but then. They they would show the total opposite, but I guess Frank Ocean is the f only person that hasn't that actually hasn't like you know, stopped performing. Right, and he didn't just stop performing; he stopped making music too. I mean, I know he's been on features and stuff, mm -hmm. but I mean, as far as his own, he hasn't dropped a single or yeah. an album. Basically, like as as a as a as a career, he just been paying the bills. He he mm -hmm. ain't been he ain't been all in. Okay, okay. Well, let's watch let's watch this eight truths about eight truths. About the uh, but wait one one more thing about the Frank Ocean thing what? just what how do you feel about him not going to this it's two weekends of Coachella she, he dropped out of the second weekend and they 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 replaced him with this group Blank that I've never heard two. yeah hey one of them went the uh, Kardashian or something I think so yeah I heard of them I've seen them around but you going to a Frank Ocean concert. They, they already replace got him the, with that. Exactly. They already got them. They already got your money. <laughs> so how would you feel about that? But I just, I just can't believe that. Like, like just to get, just to get out there, would probably be like eight bands or so. Mm-hmm. Then two. Then no, not probably not. Probably, probably about like to get both of us out there. What was it in Las Vegas or something? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it'd probably be like a like a band, two band for both of us. Mm-hmm. And then. And then it was gonna be two bands for the tickets each. So that's that's already that's already that's already um six bands. Then we got do you, do you, are you gonna want to camp camp like get a get a tent and actually we go to the, like no you don't you gonna want to get an Airbnb <laughs> all this and that and they they gonna definitely gonna be taxing like just 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 cause of that and so that's probably gonna be just for the then we were gonna bail that for a week or so. That's that's probably like five bands itself. Or something. And I heard the traffic, like no matter how close you stay, the traffic there is crazy. So taking Ubers, you know they're gonna charge you the longer you in there. Oh yeah, like if you get stuck in traffic. Mm -hmm. Wow. Then we gotta catch an Uber, so that's probably like another like three hundred dollars <laughs> just to just to get there and back. <laughs> and like say if we go to something to eat after, cause bruh, so that's at least like ten, twelve bands. Before we even get there to start, we don't even. We might want to buy a Frank Ocean shirt. 
So yeah, like I don't I don't do you think do you think the do you think these festival prices would 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 still be as expensive as they were? Like you think they were they were these expensive like before COVID? Yeah. They were. They was expensive this whole time. Coachella like has been isn't notorious for being expensive. But like, is that like that for like most? Is it like that for all festivals? Mm-hmm. When I tried to go to Rolling Loud before COVID, it was it, like I I bought I bought a Rolling no it wasn't it was a um I think it was like the Broccoli Fest um festival yeah and my ticket was like four hundred dollars. What? Just for you? <laughs> yeah. Just for you? But I ended up, I guess it was good because I ended up not going because they canceled it because of COVID. It was like the peak of COVID. So you was, you was about to pay that and go? Yeah, I already had paid it. They had to refund me my ticket. Oh, you paid it? Mm-hmm. Holy man. And then it's crazy because they didn't give me the money back at first because they had just postponed the the um the festival. Uh-huh. And they were like, we're still going to have it, but it's just going to be at a later date. And then that's when everything was on lockdown for so long. And they were like, yeah, it's not, we're probably not going to. So they had my money. They had my $400 for like a few months. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> a few months. And then they finally refunded. Good thing I had my, my, that, that secure your ticket thing. I, whenever you buy a ticket, just make sure you get that, because you never know. Oh, it's like insurance for your mm-hmm. ticket. So what if you wouldn't have got that? You you, you, got you may not have been able to get your money back. I don't know, because it was like a COVID thing, so it was like not, it was ine- inevitable, but I don't know. I feel like it would be harder to get your money back without that insurance thing. If you buy the insurance thing, they have to give you your money back if, if it's not there. I mean, if they don't have it. Mm-hmm. But... If you don't get it, then it's kind of just up in the air whether or not they want to come up with some reason why they can't give you the money back. That's crazy. Yeah, me, <laughs> me, that's crazy. To me personally, I've never, I've never went to like a festival or anything. Like that. The only first time I ever thought about going to a, a festival was Preakness. Mm-hmm. That was the first time that was like, oh, maybe I could go to this. Cause it's just like, I, like I just feel like I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be able to have fun. As a, as like I don't know, I don't know. I never, I never, not even I would, I knew I would be able to have fun, but I never even like, even thought about going to a concert or a show or something. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have been to shows before, but it was just coincidental. But that's about it. But let's watch this influencers. I guess the, this you said the influencers had like a special section too. Mm-hmm. So I guess this is from that perspective. So let's watch that. Yeah, you like that little transition, don't you? You know, smooth make you wet? Let's see. Truths about Coachella from Damn. a non- eight truths about Coachella from a non-influencer. Truth number one: the oh, norm non-influencer. Mm-hmm. Non-influencer. Okay. Why is it not going back? We can't go back. Nothing. Coachella is camping. Car camping passes are one hundred to three. Honestly, this this is really. Eight truths about Coachella from a non-influencer. Truth number one, the norm at Coachella is camping. Car camping passes are 100 to 300 for the weekend, or you can pay thousands for hotels or Airbnbs. Truth number two, there are showers, but the lines get really long during the day. I like to shower at night after the festival showers? ends when the wait is shorter. Truth number three, it's really hard to look cute at Coachella. Not only is it hard to get ready at a campsite, but it's also really dusty and hot, so you get grimy and sweaty super quickly. Take your photos at the beginning and then forget about this. Yo, we niggas, we gonna be stinking. <laughs> Bro, all them white people's bruh. So think about you in that crowd trying to bump God speed, and there's <laughs> three thousand white musty people around you. That's worse than blunt spray. That shit. That's crazy, bro. I mean, they're in the desert. Why do I have to pay this much to be dehydrated and hot outside? Now imagine if we wouldn't. Don't you know how they was doing that festival down te- like in Drill Park that we walked to. Mm-hmm. Imagine if we paid like eight hundred dollars a pop for that. Oh yeah, no. It, that's basically what's happening here. That's basically what's happening here. Aesthetic. Truth number four: There are so many lines. The bars, water refill stations, the food stands, what? bathroom. Life is lines, people. Truth number five: The food though is chef's kiss. No, literally. There's a sushi omakase speakeasy for three hundred and seventy-five dollars. Truth number. six. Three hundred for for what? For what? Go back. For sushi. I just, I just don't like how I can't go back. Yeah, but it's for sushi. Okay, sushi three hundred. 
And that's that's like what's that? What's that? How many is that? What's that like a hundred of them or something? No. Six. The festival will take a physical toll on you. Sunburn, your feet and back will hurt, and of course the Coachella cough from oh. all the dust. Truth number. Number seven, it's so expensive to just exist. Lemonade is twelve dollars. Loaded fries are fifteen. Pie. That's loaded fries or something. That's like Chipotle. Yeah, yeah, is eighteen. Truth number eight, there are secret locations and bars. I've gone to this tiki bar the past two times, run by Please Don't Tell. And bonus truth, camping can truly be disgusting. Was that poop and stuff? I don't know. The pee, bruh. So after watching that video, come on, tell me something. Are we? Are you still paying that two bands? Are we going there? If we, if you had to, if you had the twenty bands to just fuck off on the festival, I wouldn't go to Coachella on my own money. But if I was like an influencer and I got invited to Coachella, I would go. Invited? Like you talking about you'll be in the back and all that with the VIP? I mean, you're not in the back. You in the front. But I mean, like, do you think that experience is easier? If you're an influencer. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you're still in the dust and like stuff like that, but it's not the same as not being an influencer and actually paying all that money to, you have to camp and you have to take the showers there. Because when you're invited by there, you're invited by the sponsors and stuff like that. And so they normally provide you with the hotel and yeah. all the stuff like that. And even the food and stuff like that while they're there. I know I've seen influencers get invited by different people and they had like chefs there and stuff like that. So they didn't have to worry about the food and stuff like that. They mm -hmm. just had to be at Coachella. Okay. So in looking at it from that perspective, I would, if I got invited, I would not say no because of, because it's in the desert and we gonna be dirty. But if that was on your own penny and dumb? I would don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay my own money to go to Coachella on my own. No. Unless what? Unless nothing. Unless I you, wouldn't go. Even if you was a millionaire. Yeah, but I mean, like, if I was a millionaire, nine times out of ten, I would get there. I would be some type of influential person that could get, that would know some of the, at least oh, yeah. one of the sponsors. That makes sense. That makes sense. And I would probably be getting invited to Coachella. So answer the question. Don't be biased to Frank Ocean. Is Frank Ocean tripping for doing that to us? No. You think it's his fault? His fault for what? Why the shit didn't go as planned. No, I don't think it's his fault. I'm not being biased. I mean, I don't know. Like you can't act, you can't say don't be biased if you already if you already like if you already like are a fan. Like, you know what I mean? Okay. But even if like not looking at it, if I if you just was like a regular person, I also still would not be like, Oh, he's tripping. Mm-hmm. Cause things just happen, like you know what I mean. And that I see how day to day how certain things happen to people, and they can't show up for things. So it's just like it is what it is. I'm not gonna be like Frank Ocean is canceled because of this. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, you knew what you signed up for. Because Frank Ocean been kind of wishy washy a little bit. Wishy washy. So. You can't go to a Frank Ocean concert and expect him to give you Beyonce. Hell yeah. Beyonce quality. I'm like, bro, like, I'm like, bro, like, if I was a festival, I would say, like, yeah, Frank Ocean coming and then be like, yeah, yeah cancel it. Like, you don't know what tell. And people that's there for the, and the crazy thing is, people that were mad because they had, they had the money for the second weekend or whatever, people were like, oh, yeah. You should have seen this coming. And they admitted themselves that they seen it coming. It's just like they didn't want to believe that. But we all knew with Frank Ocean, if you were a Frank Ocean fan, you probably had that in mind that he was probably only going to show up for one of those weekends. Mm -hmm. If any of those weekends. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't show up at all. I'm like, damn, what type of product is this? <laughs> what type of product is this? Now, the only thing that I do, I can say that, it was bad, and I can't say it's his fault because you don't know what was happening behind the scenes. Is that it was kind of messed up that he did end it late because I mean he ended it early. I mean not early, but he ended it before it was supposed to be over mm -hmm. because he also started it late. Mm. Yeah, it was like an hour or something after. Yeah, he started it like an hour late, and then he wrapped it up by the end of curfew. But it's just like 
you were already late. No, nah, do you think that nigga was like just late getting there? No, I don't. You I mean, at the end of the day, I don't behind, know. I think he was just sitting behind stage, like eating Skittles for an hour. But at the end of the day, it's a. It's, he's just the performer. It's a lot of things, you know. It's a lot of things that go into preparing the stage, like. Yeah, you're right. It is. It is. It is a lot. I wouldn't know what to do in those shoes. Especially like a performance of that that caliber. Like you get what I'm saying. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't necessarily say that it's all on Frank Ocean's because on Frank Ocean's part because he plays a small part in the whole production. He's literally just the performer. Mm-hmm. So unless it was him behind the stage, like, yeah, I don't want to go on right now, then that would be messed up. We'll never know. But exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not going to say it's his fault, but I'm also not going to say that it is. Okay, I understand. I understand. So in my opinion, though, Frank Ocean is tripping. (laughs) 